Hey everyone, John Dran, and today I'm going to be making a new Scratch tutorial. This tutorial is going to be a little bit different from the other ones. It's going to specifically be talking about the new feature in Scratch 1.4, the recently released edition. One of the best and most requested things that's in this new Scratch is the function of user input. And that's something that, you know, people have been trying to figure out for ages, but you have to go through and make a script for every single letter, and it was very, very annoying. So what I'm going to be doing to demonstrate this is making a simple math quiz, for example. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up a new sprite, and I'm going to demonstrate a really easy way to make buttons at the same time. You go into Import, Things, and the Buttons. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, and I'm going to write the word start, like that. Just make sure it's nice and centered, and click OK. Next, I'm going to copy down the costume, I'm going to import the pressed button, make it the right size, and make the text red. Now, I'm not going to put a title on this. It'll say math test or whatever. But it would be pretty easy. You just go to the stage and write it and then have it switch to the costume when the button is pressed. So now, we're going to say when this is clicked, show and forever, or rather, yes. For this one, it's a little bit interesting. I'm going to be using the if something else something, but I want it to go forever. So I'm going to have a forever block around this. And I'm going to say if touching the mouse or pointer, switch to costume 2, else switch to costume 1. And by doing this, it's going to be costume 1. Costume 2, costume 1, costume 2, costume 1. As long as it's not touching the mouse, it'll remain costume 1. Like that. Right. The next step is going to be to say that when it's clicked, we're going to broadcast question 1. And in the same script, I'm going to say that it's going to hide. So that's basically going to do all of this. Now, I'm going to show you a method of making questions that's very simple. Now, if you have tons of questions going and more variables, then it'd probably be better for you to make a list called answers, have them all in there, and then use kind of a matching technique. But an easy way to do it is I'm just going to write. 6 times 7 like that, and move it up here. Now, here is implementing the new idea. First I'm going to put in the beginning script that makes it appear when it, create, when it gets question 1. And then I'm going to, and it's right here under sensing, I'm going to have it ask something. Now, you could have it ask, six times seven and what would happen is it would ask six times seven but as whenever I'm making a more professional or you know just a project that's not shouldn't have little bubbles floating around it what I prefer to do is make the sprite the question and just have nothing there which means there'll be no bubble and you can just put in your answer. Then, I'm going to say, you can see right here that there's a thingy called answer. So, I'm going to put in a script that says, when I receive Q1, and I could put it under here, but for the sake of clarity, I'm going to put it separately. Forever if answer is equal to zero, or answer is equal to 
this answer is going to be 42. Then I'm just going to go ahead and make a new broadcast that says question 2. So every time they answer a question correctly, it's going to broadcast the next question, which will end up hiding everything, or all of the previous, the previous question. So I would say broadcast question 2 and hide, and make the new one appear. So let's see how that one goes. 6 times 7. Alright, if I put in 42 and click enter, everything hides. And now we're ready to have the next thing appear. On the other hand, if I were to put in 56, this stays here. By putting in the answer, the answer block disappears. But this thing doesn't go away. Now, as you can probably guess, what you might want to do as long as you're making a test is when they put in a wrong answer, which you could easily do by saying that if the answer is less than or greater than 42, then broadcast end, and then it'll switch to a you've lost, and then end all sprites. Now, there's a couple of other um, differences in this new sprite that I want to talk about just for a second. The first thing is, now it doesn't show how many scripts it has under here to save space that way you don't have s the sprites take up less space down here but if you hover over them you'll get the sprite number and the script number like that the other thing is instead of double clicking you can single click on a code block in order to make it um, in order to run it over here also you can add a comment and actually stick it to this like you see that little mark there that way as you move these around the comment stays with it you can see that there's a couple more options right here which are like join hello world of course they're using the um, standard <laughs> programming things what's your name hello world such like that but now it's not only numbers, so they've switched this title over here to operate operators because you're changing values and such. So you still have these same options here. Now you have to the root, which is great because instead of dying two times two times two times two times two times two, you can put in put it in like that. Now don't be too um like concerned when you see that this is a square because um, circular things will still fit into it like that the square just means it's like all encompassing anything will go into it and here's another great little thingy that they've added which is the not so this is kind of like this else that I used on the start button and its function is instead of saying you have all of the sprites and you have to say if it is this or this or this or this or this in order to mean it's not this then you can just use this instead so like if not touching the mouse or pointer then you can have it do something rather than if touching the mouse or pointer so they've added that as well as that they've added a couple um, of changes to the interface itself for example the um, up here in the corner you can change it like this in order to give yourself more room with the sprites and then switch back to the big window or full screen as well as that you now notice that it has a little more I don't know vista e look or newer look this is the um, share save and set language buttons and now you can go through file like this Another thing is you can now take images from a camera if you have a camera hooked up to your computer, like a webcam. You can take pictures straight from there, so that's a new addition. And one interesting new thing as well, which you could always do, but you can always import sounds, which then you can you know play whole songs and stuff like that. So yeah, main difference 